Uh, I'm Bill Hunter. I'm a professional mechanical design engineer. I've been working with clients designing products for more than 30 years now and particularly helping them with um, computer simulation and optimization of, of plastic parts. Um, I'm also a surfer. I've been a surfer for 10 years. I live in Torquay, mainly surfing on mals and sometimes a shorter seven foot board as well. I have some uh, um, computer-aided engineering tools um, known as computational fluid dynamic simulation which enables me to trial different designs, of, in this case fins, as they would be performing through the water and to undertake optimization steps using the computer to simulate different design changes and um, yeah, see which one works best. Um, I, I was intrigued, I'd have to say, because um, you know, surfing technology really hasn't changed very much in the last um, 20 or 30 years to my knowledge. Um, most people around here just surf with the conventional thruster type setup, including me, and um, I'd never seen anything like it, so I was pretty interested to see what Daryl had come up with. What I actually found, what surprised me, was that um, in fact the two side fins generated a significant amount of water pressure directly on the underside of the board and that lift generated by that hydrodynamic pressure was actually a lot more significant than the, the lift force generated by the side fins themselves. So that lift force that's generated on the underside of the board is the thing that helps the surfer to stand up on the wave and enables an easier takeoff and also um, improves the manoeuvrability in the surf as well. So through, through the process of this work, um, I performed around about nine or 10 different iterations on this, this design to optimize its performance and compared its performance to a, to a thruster setup. So if you like, I used a thruster as a benchmark to see how this new design would, would compare, particularly in terms of two things. Firstly, the amount of lift that the fin system would generate with the board and secondly looking at how much hydrodynamic drag was evident in each in each case and so gradually with Daryl's um, prototyping efforts and and people surfing these different iterations that we've trialed we've come to a system where um, we effectively the, the final solution if you like we have a relatively small angle of attack on the side fins which we've found is the optimum balance, if you like, to increase lift. But um, we've also basically, again, with Daryl's input and, and the modeling work that I've done, we've developed a, a fin which has a slight concave profile on the inside face, not dissimilar to an airfoil section. And I know that Daryl's had somebody surf this board and I've seen the videos and it just looks incredible, the performance of it. So. I'm pleased to see that what I thought was the best design seems to have actually been borne out by actual surfing trials. The thing that's been really interesting to me about this project is that we've been able to throw some advanced engineering simulation tools at this particular design problem and um, essentially using the computer to optimise different design parameters and shapes and you know, looking at performance in different conditions enables us to get to the optimum design, um, you know, with an understanding of what the parameters are that are most important in, in driving the design. Um, to get an understanding of that from the computer is something that you can do which is just impossible to obtain through actual surfing. So we can generate way much, much more data and much more insight into what's, what's important and what's not important by doing this than, than you can through actually just trial and error surfing. So what I'm going to show you now is some, uh, some of the computer results which, we, which I've got from um, analysing and optimising the QFIN system against the thruster setup. So here we're starting to look at the 3D model which was the basis for for this modeling work. So what we're looking at here is a, a plot where we're looking at the underside of the board as, um, as in conditions which, are, which would be similar to about a one meter type uh, swell. And these different colors here show the vertical forces which are acting on the underside of the board. 
So these, this flat area here is a section of the underside of the board and also the vertical forces which are acting on the side fins for the thruster setup and the central fin as well. And these different colours on the plot relate to different amounts of force which are generated in different areas. And by summing all of these different forces together, we can work out exactly how much uplift force is acting on the, on the board itself. And we can do the same thing in analysing the drag of the board as well. So with the thruster set up, the side fins have a slight um, cant angle and a slight towing angle, which means that they do generate some vertical uplift force. And um, the, com the computer simulation tells me that the total lift force that's generated from the fins together with the board itself is um, in these conditions of the order of 16 kilograms worth of um, worth of uplift force. So for somebody that's about 80, 80 kilos, you're looking at about one fifth their, their weight of uplift force generated by the fins. Okay, so now what we can see is after many different design iterations, um, I've optimised the shape of the, the side fins. There's a slight protrusion at the base of the side fins and the protrusion at the base of the central fin to streamline the fluid flow. Um, and the side fins now have a slight concave profile to them, um, which I mentioned before. And what we can see now, which is really interesting with this plot, is what I was referring to earlier, which is the way in which this fin system works together with the board to generate lift, not only on the inside faces of the side fins, which you can see as these yellow areas and green areas here, but also primarily the, the big amount of lift increase that's occurred in the area just up, uh, up above the side fins and slightly ahead of the, uh, the Q fin itself. So these are these big red areas which you can see acting on the underside of the board which is this additional lift force. And so the computer software tells us that the total amount of lift force that's generated in this case with the Q-fin design is in fact now about 60 kilograms which for an 80 kilogram person is about now three quarters of their body weight. So what we have here is a system that's generating like nearly four times as much lift as a conventional thruster type setup. So again, for, um, for anybody that's trying to take off on the wave, this lift force is going to be a big help in getting you standing up faster and, and also having more fun and manoeuvring the board better when you're, on, when you're on the wave. What we're looking at now is the drag force that acts um, parallel to the underside surface of the board itself and is against the motion of the board so these drag forces are the things that slow you down when you're in a board on the water and um, we can see here that the pressure on the leading edge of all of the fins the central fin and the two side fins builds up to a peak shown as the red colored values and that's basically where most of the drag is coming from from the fin system um, the drag extends not just from the leading edge but over a small area of the face of the fin that's exposed to the water. And from this plot um, the computer can calculate that we have a net drag force acting on the, the underside of the board and the fin system of around about 12 kilograms worth of total, total drag force. When it comes to analysing the drag force that's acting on the new Q-fin design we can see that there are again some drag forces which act on the leading edge of the fin design but these frictional or drag forces don't extend much through the body of the fin itself and the reason for that is particularly on the side fins we've adopted this slightly concave profile on the face of the side fin which streamlines the fluid flow through these through these gaps between the central and side fins and therefore thereby reduces the drag so with this setup for the Q-fin, the optimised design, we found that the hydrodynamic drag in exactly the same conditions, one metre wave size compared to a thruster setup, was like 
30% less drag than what you would see with a thruster. So that's obviously going to lead you to uh, having a fin setup that's got, um, it's faster through the water than a thruster, as well as having that desirable property of, of significantly increased vertical lift. So I'll just provide a bit of insight now as to why we chose the foil section that we did particularly for the side fins. And what we're looking at here is a plot, two overlays, a red plot and a green plot and we're illustrating here two different foil sections potentially one which has um, a flat uh, face that so that would be a side fin with a flat inside face and the green plot here being a foil section where it has a more pronounced concave inside face so these foil sections are derived from known um, known airfoil sections which have been used um, in the aeronautical industry for for many years and what we're looking at when we compare these two different foil sections is that for a given angle of attack you can see here that the foil section with the concave inside base which is shown by the green line generates a significantly greater amount of lift than this is the lift coefficient here on the vertical axis it generates a significant amount more lift than a foil section which has a flat inside face which is shown by the blue plot here. Now having said that the, um, the fact that the uh, foil with the concave inside face generates more lift that doesn't occur um, with any sacrifice in, in drag. So everybody, everybody that's a surfer that surfs a thruster, fit, thruster system knows that the fin system itself is, a, is an important essential element of being able to surf at all and um, in fact with the thruster setup people take the thruster setup for granted because usually they don't realize that you know the thruster setup itself was in fact a revolutionary advance over fins that had a single central fin. What I think has, been, has happened here with the optimization of the Q-fin design is that we have a fin advance that's as revolutionary as the thruster setup was compared to a central fin. And um, it wouldn't be surprised, surprise me at all if in the years to come, we in fact have the Q-fin system take over from where the thruster was as you know, one of the greatest advances, I think, in surfing technology in 30 years.